Good morning, good evening, good everything in between. Welcome to the podcast, episode 16. I am one of your hosts, Mr. Jimbo Bernicki, and I'm joined as always by Gabe Lerman. How are you doing, Gabe? Doing well, Jimbo. Glad to be back on a regular sleep schedule, which is something you won't have the luxury of in two weeks' time for your upcoming baseball for breakfast. I'm not going to have the luxury of that uh, at any time for the next foreseeable future because I'm starting university and working full time soon. So that'll be great to throw in with my baseball responsibilities. And we hey. have our other host, Mr. Michael Beely. How are you doing, Mike? Uh, quickly checking my calendar because I forgot there was another baseball for breakfast broadcast. Yeah, I think it's the 5th or is 13th. it? 13th. Okay, cool. All right. Got it. Oh, great. A day I have school. Awesome. Actually, okay. hang on. Might be the 12th. Okay. No, I, th- I thought it was you a Tuesday. Yeah. I thought it was a Tuesday. Okay, I was like, hold okay, up, hold at least up. I don't have school. It's pinned to my Twitter profile. <laughs> let me just let me just get the answer and then I can we can this, run this. This is how professional in. we are. We don't know what we don't know what our I say keep okay. it in personally. Oh no, I'm keeping it in. <laughs> All right, so to confirm, Saturday, Tuesday, September 12th, the Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters will be hosting the Oryx Buffaloes at Escon Field, Hokkaido at 5 a.m. Eastern. Oh, awesome. And then uh, Sunday, October 1st, what I'm calling the Season Sayonara, because it's not a midnight matinee, the Chiba Lotte Marines host the Saitama Seibu Lions at 1 a.m. Eastern. And I'll be on the call for that one. Oh, man, I'm so happy I'm going to finally get to do a game at Escon Field. It's going to be sick. Uh, and, uh, so today is August 29th, 2023, and so last week, the Koshin finished, and happy Koshin victory to KO High. This marks their first victory in over a 100 years, and they may have bucked mine and Mike's predictions and many other pundits, but full credit to Mr. Gabe Lerman here, who got his call right. And so, as a little treat and reward, we're going to give you the floor to take as much time as you need for your highlights. I appreciate it. I will t- still try to keep it brief. Only two milestones worth celebrating that I caught. One of which was Buffalo's closer and former major leaguer Yoshihisa Hirano picking up his 235th NPB save on Friday. That passes Hawks legend and foreign king of closers Dennis Sarfate for fifth most all time in NPB history. Which, given that closers weren't really much of a thing up until like the 70s kind of tracks. The only four players in front of Hirano are three former major leaguers in Hyuji Fujikawa, Kazuhiro Sasaki, and current Swallows manager Shingo Takatsu. And then 121 saves ahead of Takatsu is the all-time great Hitoki Iwase, with the only one with over 400 saves. Hirano could get ahead of Fujikawa with a strong close to the season. He's only eight behind him at the time of recording. And on a much lighter note, congrats to Cebu Lions mascot Leo for setting the Guinness world record for most backflips by a mascot in 30 seconds back on Saturday. 31 backflips in 30 seconds. My head is giving me vertigo just thinking about it. Yeah, that is mega impressive. Full, so full, who was the previous record holder? Oh, good question. I don't know. I'm surprised there even is one. <laughs> what you guys don't keep up with the 30 the how many flips someone can do in 30 seconds record it's one of the most famous records in all of sports <laughs> and so that brings it over to mike your highlights what do you have this week so i have a bit of a fun one that demonstrates lote's commitment to community um earlier this week lote donated 4720 bottles of marines kirei kirei which is japanese for pretty or shiny uh, hand soap to all 30 elementary and junior high schools in Yachio City. The donation is part of the Marines Chiba Kids Smile Project, which is their initiative to promote children's health and safety in positive school environments. This is the second donation of the year. Earlier this year in March, they actually donated, I think, 4,000 bottles of hand sanitizer and alcohol disinfectant. And I forget what they did earlier. Oh, I think they did a children's camp earlier in the year, like where kids could play with the uh, players on the farm team. So it's just another way that Lote shows their commitment to uh, their new home in Chiba. I say new, even though they moved there however many, 20-some years ago. No, it's really 30 sweet. years ago. 1992. Ah. Where were they before that again? I forget. They were in Kawasaki the as the Lote Orions. That was such a good name and such a good uniform. Well, I should look into that. I do like the Orions. I have seen, I have seen some of that, but uh, I, I should look up that specific one. And so before we get into the Around the Horn, let's have a quick little ad break. Here's a word from our sponsors. Every day across America, 
Thousands of baseball fans are starving for live games because they're stuck working the night shift. They can't watch games live and are left to scavenge for highlight reels on YouTube. It doesn't have to be this way. For just 1,500 yen per month, you can sponsor a shift worker to get access to Pacific League TV. Live broadcasts, including farm team games, with start times between midnight and 5 a.m. Eastern, all blackout free. Your subscription also includes a decade's worth of full game videos on demand. Please find it in your heart to give the joy of Pacific League TV to the fans in your life. Visit PacificLeague.com to sign up. And so that brings us to the meat of today's show, like every other week, our Around the Horn segment, where we look at the league from top to bottom and do an in-depth look into all the teams. And as I've said, uh, my, I don't even know how many weeks in a row now. It's been a lot. We start off with Bill Rex Buffaloes. Take it away, Gabe. And it's going to be that way for a long while, I hope. Nine-game unbeaten streak, which kind of came to a crashing close earlier today. But the Buffaloes' lead in the Pacific League is now nine and a half games, which means that the Orcs Buffaloes have a magic, magic number! number! 22. Any combinations of Marines' losses and Buffaloes' wins that equals that number clinches the Buffaloes their third straight Pacific League pennant and a berth in the Climax Series final stage, as well as hosting all six of those games. Oryx has a record of 19-8-2 since the All-Star break, which is the second best in all NPB. The only team better is the 23-7 and team, the Tigers, who share the Kansai area with the Buffaloes. Heck, the only other Pacific League team with a winning record since then is the Fighters at 16-14-1. It's dire, man. <laughs> that doesn't even that... make sense when you think about it. Like, how, how the Marines, the Eagles, and the Hawks have all had losing records since the All-Star break? That's insane. They've all had their lunch eaten by the Buffaloes, basically. Right, sure enough. And pounding on each other. That unbeaten streak included a run of seven games allowing one run or fewer the first time the franchise has done it since August 1941, before the Pacific League even existed. We're going all the way back to the JDL era for how ridiculous this run has been. That's all down to their pitching. And lately, one pitcher I want to highlight is their southpaw from Okinawa, Hiroya Miyagi. This is his third season in NPB, and he has continued to dominate. He put up 12 strikeouts in a four-hit shutout back on Thursday. That brings his record to 9-4 and four with a 2.49 ERA and 98 strikeouts over 113 and one-third innings pitched. So again, him, Yamamoto, Kohei Azuma, who we just saw in the midnight matinee a couple of weeks ago. And now they move Taisuke Yamaoka to the bullpen to be another fireballer there. Eey. That said, there's a caveat to all this. You remember how I was waxing about the Buffalo's pitching lab on the midnight matinee and how dominant they've been this season? Well, about that. Shunpei Yamashita has been deactivated from the Buffalo's roster on Monday due to an apparent lower back injury, which shortened his most recent start on Saturday to only five innings. And that was a 12-inning tie against the Marines, so Lord knows they could have used more pitching from him. And he did so even though he topped out at 100 miles an hour on his fastball. From what I can read... From the news wires, it sounds like it's mostly precautionary. So at least it's a 10-day break for Yamashita. And hopefully that won't derail his likely Rookie of the Year campaign. And that brings us over to the second-place team in the league, the long-standing second-place team, the Chibaletti Marines. Take it away, Mike. Give it up for second place. Uh, Lote fans, we have managed to avoid a August collapse. Lord knows that's happened a couple times in the past few years. Uh, five and four in their last ten, basically coming off a three-game sweep by Oryx. Well, they tied in the one game, but I mean, let's just call it a sweep, I guess. Prior to that, they won a pair of series against both SoftBank and Rocketon, and Gregory Polanco had another three uh, home run game against SoftBank on August third in a five to nine loss. So thank you, Polanco, for showing up to work that day. I suppose uh, Roki Sasaki is no longer on Lote's pitching leaderboard anymore. Finally. Atsushi Tanichi is your new team leader in ERA with 2.96, wins with 10, and strikeouts with 136. 
Getting to the end of the season here, just keep playing well and keep SoftBank and Rocketon at bay, which I don't think it's going to be very hard to keep SoftBank at bay at this point. But, you know, anything can happen with a whole month left to go. Spotted on that Gregory Polanco hat trick. Uh, He's the first Marines player since the legend Hiromitsu Ochiai in 1985 to have two home run hat tricks in a single season. And that third home run was a rude welcome to NPB for Darwinson Hernandez, who was picked up by the Hawks from the Boston Red Sox organization, if memory serves. So welcome to the league team. And a quick question about the, the pitcher who you said surpassed um, Sasaki in strikeouts. How many more games did it take him? Panaichi, you mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, quite a lot. Man, that's crazy. Oh, Sasaki. We miss you. I mean, Sasaki was on the leaderboards up until I think last week. He had somewhere. I mean, I'm sure there's some advanced stats I haven't looked at that he's probably still on there. And so that brings us over to, uh, you know, from happy news to uh, less happy news. The SoftBank, Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks, who went 2-4 and four this week, including a brutal, crushing series sweep loss to the Eagles. Uh, the, the end of the regular season can't come soon enough because the Eagles are literally right on their tails just one game back last time I checked. And, um, I mean, I feel like a broken record saying the same thing every week, but it really is just Kensuke Kondo and Yuki Nagita are basically the only people hitting right now. No one else is pulling their weight. Um, the Alfredo Despagne experiment has been an absolute disaster. I, I, I haven't seen him get a hit this so far this season so i was genuinely surprised when i found out he was batting 171 because if you told me i would have guessed under 100 and he's had two home runs i don't know when those were and it's just you know just to kind of speak to the ineptitude of his batting so far um he's earned 23 bases over 33 games that's brutal <laughs> like i know he's not exactly a high average hitter but he's not i mean he's not getting anything going right now because he also he doesn't offer any defense or any sort of base running acumen so yeah, he's, he's just dead weight on the team. Uh, pitching hasn't been faring that much well either. Uh, most of the starters get out of the game pretty early, and then the bullpen is even worse, though. You know, at least Carter Stewart Jr. won a game today against the Buffaloes. Solid five strikeout uh, performance and uh, gave up no runs. So, you know, at least there's that. But also, uh, you know, in even worse news on the health front, Ryoya Kurihara um, broke his wrist on, th- in, on Thursday and now is out for the season. And that sucks because he also lost a lot of time last year with an ACL uh, tear. So things are just, it's just hard. It's, I had such high hopes at some point, you know, it feels like a long time ago that I really thought the Hawks were going to do something and it's, it's just not going right now. The only, the only hope I have is that sometimes they look decent. Like, I mean, they, they beat the Buffaloes today pretty resoundly, so it can happen. I mean, maybe, maybe it could come playoff time if they make it at this point, some magic happens and they pull through, but it doesn't look good to say the least. And uh, speaking of a team who it's starting to look better for and is hot on the tail of the Hawks, the Tohoku Rakuten Golden Eagles. Take it away, Mike. I mean, this... just to, to jump in, we're talking about a three and a half game lead right now. Is it three and a half? Two, no, it's sorry, two game. Okay. Uh, so as of today, th- yeah, I was looking at an old data. Uh, the Eagles are only two games back of the Hawks. So they're they're breathing down oh, the necks yeah. of their they're birdie only, brethren. They're only one win back, but yeah, they have a few more losses. Okay. Yeah. Games in hand, yep. Yeah. Uh, it's. I mean, there was a point Rakuten was the absolute worst team in the league, and the Hawks were on top. So, like, oh, it's brutal to look at. But anyway, that brings us over to Rakuten. What do you got for us this week, Mike? Objects in mirror are closer than they appear. <laughs> uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, two evil empires have become have come crumbling down. Um, in both MLB and MPB this year. That's something. That's kind of interesting, in my opinion. Well, I, but, uh, I, I love the parallels between the leagues. <laughs> it just keeps happening. Uh, Rock 10, not much to write home about. I mean, yeah, they're in fourth place and they're gaining ground, but it feels like every week at this point, they're just gaining ground. I feel like they should already be in a playoff spot. It seems like they're not. I mean, they got pretty beat up by the fighters. And, you know, if you remember last week, I said that they had to beat up the fighters, you know, beat all the teams that they have to beat. And then, you know. I forget what it was. Fighters, SoftBank, um, Lote, and then Cebu. They, I said they had a pretty good schedule. So they did beat up SoftBank. They did sweep them, it looked like. Uh, now they're currently beating up Cebu, but I really don't have much news for them other than they're still trying to get to that third place spot. I still think that they'll make the playoffs by the end of the season, but yeah, they just have to keep climbing. Just keep swimming. 
just keep flying. Pretty much. There's and, you know, one element I, I spotted that I, I, I need to bring up. Uh, I spotted this on Twitter earlier, and, and this is me being a nitpick. I don't like gradient jerseys. I dislike them immensely. I don't either. I and yet do. Somehow, <laughs> and yet Please. somehow the Eagles have a record of 9-1 and one when they're wearing their gradient jerseys this season. Because they're good. Uh, do you remember in 2020 the other league team that had that gray and yellow gradient jersey it was just gray to white and Ugh. yes and i hated oh, okay. it okay that, that sounds was so bad that sounds horrible i'll give you that but no these eagles ones are great and i like no wonder they're not a one when they wear them they just look like such a cool team <laughs> the image of justin Bohr in that gradient jersey still gives me nightmares they were terrible <laughs> Well, speaking of teams that have really cool jerseys, that brings us over to not basement dwellers anymore. They fought their way up to fifth place. The Nippon Ham Fighters take it away game. And that's thanks to a 5-4-1 record in their last 10. They've snuck half a game ahead of the Cebu Lions. And that's despite the Fighters continuing to have the league's worst home record at 25-31. and 31. The best? The Marines, 35, 18, and 2. You want to talk about a home field advantage. That field is basically tilted for the Marines. I don't have too many notes for the fighters this week compared to weeks prior, but I did catch something interesting because we, we've talked a lot about Kolshien last week and this week, and now one of those legendary high school arms, Kosei Yoshida, was called up by the fighters back on August 25th. The 22-year-old right-hander is still working to find his feet at the top club, but his one appearance so far this season was a scoreless inning. Down on the farm, his last five appearances as a middle reliever resulted in only one earned run. So maybe he's finding his form. Just don't go look up how many pitches he threw during the Koshien tournament if you want your arm ligaments to not feel sympathy pain. Well, now I have to, but we'll do that. It's later. over 800. Oh my God. And how many games? Uh, I think it was over seven. Yikes, man, that's crazy. Well, speaking of pitchers who pitched themselves into injury, maybe. Sabre Lions, very vague connection. Uh, okay, that's a stretch. Anyway, that uh, brings us over to the basement dwellers, the Saitama Sabre Lions. And, uh, it, you know, I've had, time, I've had times where it's hard to talk about them before, and now it's just, it's dire. It's depressing. It's horrible. <laughs> they They just keep, the losses just keep piling up. And they're all but mathematically eliminated at this point. I'm not sure if they actually are, but I mean, they're working on it. They're one in five this week. Starting pitching, starting pitching though, actually still good. It's insane. It's the only part of the team that still works. Tyro and Matsumoto both had great games this week for Matsumoto still to lose despite that. But the bullpen just totally falls apart every time. And even worse than that, the bats have completely disappeared. Like, they scored a grand total of nine runs all of this week with five of those coming in one game. So if if we were doing some sort of fantasy baseball thing, just always pick a pitcher who's against the Lions because they are getting nothing at the plate right now. And, you know, by contrast, they gave up 21 runs over that same stretch. But, you know, I mean, at least Leo set the Guinness World Record for backflips in 30 seconds with 31. That was a thing. I'm Jimbo, uh, I think we need to start, we need to cycle up with the teams next season because this is just putting a number on your mental health, I can it's, tell. It's really brutal that both teams, you know, it was fun when like the Hawks were good and the Lions were bad, but oh, it's rough when they're both bad. It's okay, Jimbo. <laughs> we're not here for you, but I'm sure somebody is. <laughs> oh, to move on to a slightly more jovial note, we've continued on with our How to Speak Pacific League series as me and my best professor voice gives you some lingo to help you translate broadcasts when you're watching them on PacificLeague.com. Take a listen. How to Speak Pacific League. Lesson 7. The Pitches. Not everyone in the Pacific League packs a ghost fork ball or a gyro ball, but almost every pitcher can throw a sutoreto, a straight pitch, meaning a fast ball. Most pitch terms use the loan words applicable from English. Kabu, Suraida, Supurito, Foku, Kato, Tsushim, and Chenji for change up. 
You may also hear Henkaku for any off-speed or breaking pitch. And so we're back. I've gotten off the phone with my therapist. I'm feeling a lot better now. And now let's check with our familiar faces in new places. How are we doing stateside this week, Gabe? I've got three notes. Two good, one not so good. On Japanese Heritage Night at City Field back on Friday, former Hawk Kodai Senga went six and two-thirds innings pitched, allowing only four hits and two runs while striking out ten. That's now 11 straight starts of three earned runs or fewer for the Ghost Forkball Master. The Mets really do have something special in Senga, and I hope they recognize that. Also, former Buffalo Masataka Yoshida had a bit of a rough August, but he went three for three yesterday with a double and is starting to pull out of that slump. Still only has 61 strikeouts on the season, and he's slashing 298, 352, 460 with 12 home runs and 28 doubles. In other words, basically what we expected from Yoshida. He's got that contact bat. He's got some pop. And speaking of popping, uh, Shohei Otani, oh. take my ligaments. Oh, what a brutal transition. Oh, my God. <laughs> The Angels announced that the former Hokkaido Nippon Hem fighter has a torn UCL and thus can't pitch anymore, but still can bat. So who knows? Maybe that home run leaderboard is still his to command. And what stinks is that this is right before his free agency period. I mean, at this point, maybe he does go back to the Hawks. <laughs> no, no, no. He, he's going to command a big paycheck from someone. I can't wait to see where he ends up. The hot stove is going to be bubbling this offseason. Actually, just a quick list. I didn't even entertain that as a possibility. If SoftBank backed up a literal yacht full of money to his place, is there is there any restriction stopping that? Are they allowed to do that? There's no salary cap and mm. no uh, luxury tax mm. in Nippon professional baseball. Interesting. That may be the starting point for one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, know how much money Masayoshi Son has, and I'm not going to speculate. That would be that would be great, man. All these people discussing where Otani's going to go next season. It would be insane if he just came back to Japan. I've never even actually entertained that as a possibility. But that man, that would be so good for the league too. Ah, oh, I'm really thinking about this now. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah. Anyway, so that brings us over to our final segment of the evening, our question of the day from us to you. What is your favorite nickname in MPB for the players? As we went over last week, Gabe had some really cool nicknames he'd been finding. And so what are your guys' favorite nicknames? Uh, Gabe, I'll start with you. I mentioned the Ace of Aces for Yoshinobu Yamamoto. I also just call him YY every once in a while. I don't think he's got a nickname of his own aside from just Yoshi in uh, Japanese. But because of how dominant he's been, leaving aside Roki Sasaki, Ace of Aces, the best of the best, is what I go for. I also noticed that a uh, former Making the Pitch interviewee on uh, the Fighters International unofficial Twitter account uses Asamax for Daiki Asama because of his speed. And because I adored him so much in a previous video game, I have always called Ryo Ota, who I think is still on the farm team for the Buffaloes, the Phenom. I'm keeping an eye on this kid because I think he's going to be special. Oh, okay, those are pretty good. I've always been kind of partial to the monster of the X era. Uh, I remember when I was kind of learning a bit about Japanese baseball growing up, I found out Daisuke's nickname was the monster of the Hisei era, and I thought that was really cool. And now we've got a monster of the Reiwa era with Roki Sasaki and I just think I love that I love the idea of there sort of being like a lineage nickname that like every sort of generation there's a guy who earns this kind of nickname that's I think that's a very cool kind of tradition thing and I'm wondering who the monster of the Showa era would be then hmm, I'm gonna do a quick look while Michael what's probably yours? uh Kaneda I would think Ah, yes, because that ran from uh, 1926 to 1989. It's it's either Kaneda or Inao. Uh, so, Mike, what's your favorite nickname? Uh, well, for uh, Yamamoto, I'd like to chime in that I used to call him Murder Face because if you play 2019 um, Pro Baseball Spirits, in that series, they clearly use face scans for the faces. They don't model them, you know, from scratch. And in whatever picture he took for them, he just looked really unhappy. So when you were playing with a Yamamoto that had maxed out stats, you just had him completely just really mad on the mound. 
while you were throwing, like, you know, if you can give you max them out, you get 102 mile per hour fastballs off him. And it would just look really funny just watching him dominate with that face. And I also am a fan of the Monster of the X era. I like Orao for Sugimoto. And I also like how with Matsuzaka, he had an entire pitching generation named after him, the Matsuzaka generation. That's true. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I thought that was so cool, too. So that was that was always cool to me as well. And there you have it. And so, obviously, if you're still listening to us so far, thank you for staying with us. And please tell us what your favorite nickname in MPB is, and even you know, what just your favorite nickname baseball or any other sport is. That brings us to the end of today's show. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. Please share and tell your friends, and we'll see you next week. Take care.